Hi guys, it's John here, and today we're going to be updating our SE Prime storage provider with the brand new Supervisor Lite application, which has been released by the SE Prime team. So basically, this applies only if you've bought a license for your storage provider. So if you haven't bought a license, you will need to get one before you can proceed with this. But this is going to serve as a little application which will keep our storage provider up to date with the latest recommended provider settings. So you've got all the sort of collateral and minimum and maximum storage prices here. And it's also going to announce our provider for us so we can actually clean up our providers, get rid of the duck DNS settings and script and things, and we'll actually have a much cleaner setup. So I'm going to start with the Linux provider, but I have put time codes in the description if you want to skip to the Windows provider, but we'll end up with the same results. So what we're going to want to do first is obviously clean up our storage provider, get rid of the duck DNS settings and script, and then we're going to install this supervisor light application and that's going to run alongside SPD and keep our provider up to date with the latest settings. Okay, so we'll log into our provider first. Then we're just going to type sudo suit, type our password in again, and we're now in. Okay, so we are in our home folder and what we're going to do is just check our cron tab. So if you remember, we actually set up the duck DNS to update every five minutes in our cron tab. So we're going to do a cron tab minus E and here you can see this line here. This is the line that we're going to get rid of because this is what's currently doing the duck DNS updating. So you can see here every five minutes it will do an update. So I'm going to go down here. Now do take note of this location because we're going to actually delete the script that does it just to clean up the provider and make sure it's all uh, nice and clean. So when you're happy that you know where the script is, we're going to just delete this line. Okay, and then do a colon and then write and quit. So we can now do cron tab minus L and we can see here the result of our cron tab and that line has now disappeared. That's good. We're now going to go and CD to that duck DNS folder. Just remove the first bit here and just do an LS. We can see here the duck DNS folder is just in our home folder here. So if you do CD title forward slash, that goes to your home folder. And this is where the duck DNS script is. So we can just remove the folder itself. We do RM minus RF, double click duck DNS and right click to paste. And if you do an LS after that, you'll see the folder is now gone. So duck DNS has disappeared from our system. So now we can actually download the uh, supervisor light and get it updating for us. So just to confirm, this is my current uh, announced host here. So I'm currently on port 14282 and I'm using the DuckDNS here to do its updating. So let's have a look at what happens once we get the new software installed. This is of course all documented on the site, which I'll link to down below. But what we're gonna do is just go to the SC Primer software page here. And this is what we want to download, the Supervisor Lite. And of course, we're gonna download them on for Linux. Interestingly, they have included an ARM version as well. So if you are still running yours on a Raspberry Pi, you should be able to follow this, but we're gonna download the Linux version as that's what we are currently using here. So just right click and copy the link because we're gonna go back to our provider and just do a wget, right click, and that's gonna paste our link in and that's gonna download the file itself. Now we can just unzip that file. So if we just do an ls to have a look, we can see the file is there. So we want to unzip it. So unzip, double click here and right click there, and that's gonna unzip the file. Okay, so we have a look now at our unzipped file. We can see here that the supervisor light is now sat in our home folder. Now we want to move this somewhere more useful. So let's move it into the location where SPD is, and then we can actually have it all sat in the same folder. So we're going to do a move, MV, and then we're going to pop in the name of the file. We're going to tell it where we want to move it to. So we want to go to mount, slash mount, slash SC prime current version. Now that's where our SPD and SPC are sat. So let's move it over there. And now if we go to that location with a CD, do an LS minus LAH, we can see supervisor light is now sat inside. Okay, so what they recommend doing is actually obviously adding this to your startup script. And it does actually mention you should leave a 60 second wait at least before it tries to actually start the supervisor up because you need time for your provider to actually start up before starting the supervisor light program. So we're gonna copy what they're saying here. And this is basically the, exactly what we need to put into our startup script because we are running on a non-default port here. 
If you are running it on the standard port 4282, then you don't need to include this section here. So don't worry about that, but you can keep it in and just put, you know, 4282 if you wish to just copy the whole line, but just remove the one if you're using the standard port. But again, you don't have to do that. That's just uh, what we're gonna do here. So let's go to our startup script and we can add this line in and get it running. Okay, so our startup script is in CD user local bin. So go to that location and we can see here our SCP startup script. So let's edit that in Vi there, stick that in. Okay, so this, if you remember fondly, is how we set our provider up and get it unlocked. So we're just gonna add this to the bottom of our script here. So scroll down to the bottom, press I to insert, add in a few lines here, and we can basically just copy and paste the behind text. We even just click on the copy button here. I'm gonna paste that into our script. Okay, so here we are with our script in its sort of complete state here. We see here, sleep for 60 seconds, and then start the supervisor light. So once you're happy, that all looks good, we can escape, do a colon, and then write and quit W and Q. Now there are additional settings that you can set for this script. So you can have a look again through the site. If you do wanna change any of these settings, you just add this onto the command, but we're just gonna keep it as default because we don't want to change any other bits and pieces. We're just gonna let it all be automatic. And then it really is a set and forget type setup. So let's just leave it all as automatic. But yeah, it's worth knowing that you can add additional uh, commands to the command line. Okay, so now, like I said before, we've got our hexcrypto.duckdns.org provider. So what we're gonna do now is just reboot this and make sure our startup script is working. So just reboot and then give your provider a couple of minutes to start back up. We'll reconnect and we'll just confirm that the supervisor light is now working okay. Okay, so once you have rebooted, if you type in the following, which is, again, this is on their site, this is basically gonna just search for the SPD and supervisor service. So we can see they're both running okay. So let's go into our SC Prime current version. Just do a SPC host and see what it says. So here we go, the host has been announced as the IP address. So that's worked fine. So we just need to wait for the Grafana site, which will I think it updates every few minutes, basically. So we're gonna have to wait a short while for that to appear. So what I'll do is I will move on to the Windows version now, and we'll come back at the end and just make sure they've both obviously refreshed on the Grafana site as well. Like I said, it will take a short while, but we'll move on to the Windows now and get that one sorted as well. Okay, so the Windows version is very simple as well. So we're just gonna download the software and we're gonna create a new little script to start it up. And that's literally all we need to do. So let's just go to the download page and we're just gonna copy this link by right clicking and clicking copy link. I'm gonna paste this into our provider, which is over here. So hit return here and that will download the supervisor light. So click on open file once it's downloaded. And close your browser off now and we're just gonna extract this file from the zip. So click and extract all and then extract. And now we're gonna paste this, or copy and paste this into our location where our software is stored, the SC Prime software. So wherever you're keeping your SPD and SPC, I'm keeping mine in C SC Prime software. We just need to copy and paste this file into the SC Prime software folder, just to keep it neat. It doesn't have to be in here, but it just keeps everything in one place. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is open a notepad and we're gonna create a brand new file to actually get this started up. Now we can't add it into the existing startup file. It does need to be a separate file to do this. So just bear that in mind, we're gonna create a brand new startup script for this little application. So as recommended on the SC Prime site, we're gonna give SPD a few seconds to start up first. So what I'd recommend you do is, I'll put this in the description as well, but you can just copy and paste straight from the site, obviously into your provider, and that just speeds things up a bit. Now, what I'm copying and pasting here is if your provider is running on a non-default port. Now on this version on Windows I've got, it is running on the default port, which is a 4282. So actually I don't need to include any of this at all. I can delete all of this 
and keep it nice and tidy. If you are running on a non-default port, then leave this bit in as you will need to obviously specify the port that your provider is running on. I'm going to re remove mine because it isn't running on a non-default port. And I'm just going to copy the folder or location here and just pop that in front of supervisor light with a backslash so that we know exactly where the supervisor light XE is stored. So that's going to be run from there after a timeout of 60 seconds. So we're going to give this a file save as, and we're going to save it into our SC Prime software folder. Now save as type will be all files. We're going to call this start hyphen supervisor hyphen light dot bat. You can call it whatever you like. I'm just calling it this so I know exactly what it's doing. So we'll call it that, click save, and that's going to wait 60 seconds, and then it's going to start up the supervisor light. So now we can go into our task scheduler. So find your task scheduler, right click it, go to more and run as administrator. And here we're gonna do a couple of things. We're gonna clean up our duck DNS and we're gonna add it in our new task as well. So if you remember the duck DNS settings are in Windows and we have to scroll down to PowerShell and scheduled jobs. And here is our duck DNS update and start job here. So we can actually just right click on these and disable them. If you wish, you can delete them, obviously, just get rid of them completely. But those are now disabled, so we won't be using Duck DNS at all. So let's go back to the top of Task Scheduler and go to Task Scheduler Library. We're going to create our new scheduled job in here. So we're going to create a task. We're going to call it Start SC Prime Supervisor Light. Put a description if you want, you don't have to. And we're gonna do run whether the user is logged in or not and run with the highest privileges. On the trigger, we're gonna do a, a new trigger and it's gonna be at the system startup. So begin the task at startup and we can just leave everything as default and press okay. And the actions are going to be to have a new action Start a program and we're going to browse to our SC Prime folder. Click on the Start Supervisor Lite batch file that we created. So you can see here that's a Windows batch file. We don't want to start the actual supervisor itself. We want to start the startup script. So click on Open and then just press OK. And we can press OK again and it's going to ask for our password. So pop your password in and press OK. And we've now got our new job created here. So we've disabled DuckDNS. We've got our new script for the system startup. So now what we can do is reboot the system and it will start SC Prime up and then a minute later it will start the supervisor light up. So let's close this off and close this script down and give it a reboot. Okay, log back into your system once it is back up. And we're gonna go into the task manager and just check the running processes to make sure everything is started up correctly. So again, right click the start button and go to task manager and we can click on details and just type SPD. And we'll see SPD is running. So we should see in 60 seconds or so, uh, or sooner because obviously the system's already booted, that the supervisor light should appear just under here. So we'll just keep monitoring this until it appears. Okay, so mine's been running a minute now and it hasn't actually started up. So we're just gonna test the script and make sure it works and just see what could possibly go be going wrong. So let's open up a command prompt I'm going to go to SC Prime software and we're just going to run the start supervisor.bat and see what actually happens. So we've got the timeout working there. Okay, so running it manually, it seems to have started okay. So what we might need to do is adjust the actual timeout for Windows so that it actually starts later and get you know has more than a minute to start up. Maybe there's so many things running on this system that uh, 60 seconds isn't quite enough from the start of the system for SPD to load up and get into the right state. So let's come out of this. It is obviously working okay and we're just gonna edit our script We'll give it 120 seconds to start up. So that's two minutes from system startup. In fact, let's give it uh, let's give it three minutes because there's no major rush particularly. So we'll give it a three minute timeout for it to start up 
and we'll see what happens. So save that and we'll reboot again and we'll just see if it has best, more time to actually uh, start up. Okay, so our system has just loaded back up now. So I've started my stopwatch and we're just going to see if it starts up in three minutes time. So I'm just going to monitor the details tab again and we'll just see if it uh, suddenly appears. Okay, so that looks a lot better now to me. We've got supervisor light to load up. So yeah, I gave it three minutes. Maybe it's a bit of overkill, but uh, if you find yours isn't starting up after 60 seconds, then yeah, just adjust that time accordingly and you should be okay. So now let's just check our host or provider is actually looking good. We can see it has been announced as its IP address on the correct port as well. So I'm gonna to go to the Grafana site now and have a look at how they're both doing. So here's my Linux one from earlier. So let's just refresh that and we can see already actually it has now got its IP address, which is good. So we'll go to our Windows one now as well. And it hasn't updated in Grafana yet and we're still showing us offline and with the old host name. But yeah, give it, we'll give it a few more minutes and that should update with our IP. Okay then, so Grafana has finally updated and yeah, it does take a good 15, 20, 30 minutes to update, but yeah, we can see we're now updated on our Windows provider and our Linux provider as well, both doing via IP. We've disabled DuckDNS on both, so we're not relying on that service anymore. And now we can just set and forget our providers. We don't need to think about setting different prices for the collateral and bandwidth settings and we don't need to worry about announcing our provider with a third-party service. So whilst I'm here I'll just have a quick look. It looks like we're doing pretty well so far with our incentives this month. We've got 20 SCP here and on this one currently we've apparently got about 50 SCP so I'm not quite sure why we've got so much but uh, I'm not going to complain about that. It's all looking good so yeah we've still got a few more days of the month left and then we'll see how much we end up with in total. But hopefully this video was useful. If it was, please do like and subscribe. Don't forget to ask any questions you have down below. I'll do my best to help out where I can. And again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.